Hey guys, what is up? It is Aaron from Vigilante Motors. As you notice, we are not in the garage today. We are in the office because we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a Q&A, answering some of the questions the viewers have had, not only to help them, but anybody who watches the channel might get some knowledge from this. Really good questions that some viewers have posed. So let's get right to it. Now, I want to begin this starting off with a really fun question that was posed to me, and I love the question, so here it goes. It says, Aaron, you seem like you're a Jeep guy. What are your thoughts on the new Ford Bronco? Well, I love the new Ford Bronco, to be honest. And yes, I am a Jeep guy. Since I was about 23, I've had six different Jeeps from TJs to JKs to JLs. And I do love Jeeps, but I'm not really a Jeep guy. I'm a car guy. And the new Ford Bronco, to me, looks awesome. I'm not talking about the ones that look like a Ford Escape with a Bronco badge on them. I'm talking about the mid-size, almost full-size Ford Broncos like the Sasquatch. I think they look great, especially the two-door model, which is much bigger than the two-door model of the Jeep Wrangler. And so it entices me to want to go out and actually test drive one of these things because the interior looks good. The exterior is a really good homage to the late 60s and early 70s Broncos, which I love. I think Ford has captured that really very well. So yes, I love the Ford Bronco. If you put my feet to the fire right now and said, Aaron, you can either own a two-door Wrangler Rubicon or you can own a two-door Bronco Sasquatch, I'd choose a Sasquatch. All right, next question. Aaron, you made the differential fluid change look so easy, but I feel intimidated. Should I be? No, you really shouldn't be. It's a very easy job. It just seems and looks intimidating, but it really isn't. I have faith that you can do it. Anybody can do it, to be honest. Just make sure you're following the directions of the gasket maker. They're gonna tell you when you can put the fluid in and when you can't. And make sure those mating surfaces, like I said in the video, are super clean. That way you don't have a leak going forward. But don't be intimidated. Check that video out, follow it step by step. It tells you everything you need to know. But if you have any questions further than that, comment below and I'll happily answer them. All right, this next question is a great question. It's something I've wanted to talk about for a while, and it says, Aaron, the dealer is telling me that I have a sealed transmission and that the oil is a lifetime for the transmission. Is that accurate? Yes and no. Sealed transmissions are a thing, and basically all that means is that you can't check the transmission fluid from the engine bay. Back in the day, you could pull a dipstick, similar to engine oil, and check your transmission fluid. A sealed transmission fluid does not have that dipstick. You'd have to get underneath the vehicle in order to check your fluid. That's what a sealed transmission is. Lifetime fluid, well, that's a gray area. What they're talking about is it lasts for the lifetime of the warranty period on that powertrain of that particular vehicle. So if you have a five year, 60,000 mile warranty, that's the lifetime of that transmission fluid. They're not gonna tell you that, but that's what it means. Because like any other oil, gear oil is exactly the same thing. It breaks down from heat and friction. And inside your transmission, there's a lot of moving parts and there's a lot of heat. And eventually that oil breaks down, so it needs change. So don't be duped by thinking that because they told me it's good for the lifetime of the vehicle, that at 150,000 miles, that oil is still going to be good because it's not. My recommendation to anybody would be at around 60,000 mile mark, especially if you're a city driver, get your transmission fluid changed. That way you'll extend the period and lifetime of that transmission. All right, next question. Aaron, when I go to start my car, I just hear a clicking noise. What does that mean? Well, hopefully you got your car started first and foremost. What it means is that you're getting enough juice from that battery to get the starter motor to move, but you're not getting enough juice or energy or power out of that battery to actually crank the engine over. So you probably have a dying or dead battery. If you jump it, it should get running again. Remember everybody, batteries last three to four years. You buy a brand new 2022 car today or 2023, in three to four years, that battery probably won't be any good. And if you live in extreme conditions like the heat of the South or Southwest, or in the cold climates like North Dakota, Minnesota, or New England, you can cut that battery life in half. It's only two to four years. So don't be surprised that if your car is only two years old, it's brand new and the battery dies, well, sometimes that happens. If you hear just one click, even after a jump, and you'll notice it'll be one really loud like click, even after a jump, well, that means that you probably have an issue with your starter motor or your starter relay. And those are things you're definitely gonna have to replace before you get going again. All right, next question, another really great question. Aaron, conventional oil or synthetic? There's so many choices, I'm confused, please help, what do I use? Great question. Well, my recommendation would be this, 
follow your owner's manual. It's that simple. If your owner manual calls for a full synthetic, then you must use a full synthetic. That's what the manufacturer recommends. That's what you should be using. If it's a gray area, if it doesn't specify whether it's conventional or full synthetic, you can use whatever you choose. Just follow a couple guidelines. If you're using conventional oil, which is usually typically cheaper, you want to change your oil every 3,000 miles religiously, no matter what. If you're using a full synthetic oil, my recommendation would be every 5,000 miles. Now, you get a couple more thousand miles, it's a little bit more expensive, but every 3,000 for conventional, 5,000 for synthetic. If there's a gray area, it's up to your discretion. You choose, don't stress out too much about it. Pick one that you like best and go with it. All right, let's do one more here. It's another really good question. Aaron, my steering wheel is shaking while I'm driving. What does that mean? Well, if it's shaking when you first start moving, so at low speeds, it shakes all the way from 10 miles an hour up to 70, could be bad wheel bearings or suspension issues. You definitely want to get that checked out. If it only happens at highway speeds, 50, 55, 60, 65, and your steering wheel is vibrating, you probably just have a tire out of balance. No big deal. Go to any local mechanic or any pet boys or anything like that. They'll balance your tires out and that problem will be solved. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you so much for joining me on the q and I actually had a lot of fun doing this. If you guys like these videos and you want more Q&As, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Better yet, comment below and tell me, Aaron, we want to see more Q&As and I will absolutely do them. It was a blast and you guys have awesome questions. Now, stay tuned. We have new videos coming up once a week. Next week, we're going to do how to change your transmission fluid. It's actually a really simple process. You shouldn't be intimidated by it. Very, very simple, easy tools. Anyone can do it. That's next week. After that, we have things like how to bleed your brakes, how to flush your radiator. We're going to install the rest of that lift kit on the Jeep. I'm going to show you how to do that. And winter is coming up. And so we're going to do some videos on how to winterize and get your vehicle ready for winter, things you want to check for, things you want to have with you in your vehicle ready for winter. So stay tuned for that as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. My name is Aaron. This is Vigil Anti-Motors. And as always, y'all, peace.